Hello, in this video, I'll be talking about the navigation component in Android. The navigation component helps us manage and visualize how our application may operate. There are three parts to the component, a navigation host, a navigation controller, and a navigation graph. A navigation host is a container that we place in our app. We use this container to display the active fragment or activity for our current destination. The navigation controller is an object that we create in code to control the navigation between the destinations. And the navigation graph is the actual visual representation of how our navigation will work and look. To begin using the navigation component, we need to add the dependencies in our code. Go to the app level build gradle file and add the dependencies. Define the version that you want to use and implement navigation fragment and navigation UI. For the latest version, visit the Android Navigation Library page. Keep in mind that you will need Android Studio 3.3 or higher and Java 8 to use the navigation component feature. Once you have implemented the dependencies, we can begin creating the three parts to the component. In Android Studio, select the Android option from the drop-down menu so we can see all the necessary files and directory for our project. Right-click on the Resource folder and go to New Android Resource File. Give the file a name and change the resource type to Navigation. This will create a navigation directory and an XML navigation graph file. Next, create the navigation host. Go to your application's main activity XML layout file. In the palette, search for the nav host fragment widget. This will be the container that we use to display the current active destination for our navigation component. Click and drag it into the layout to place it in there. It will prompt a dialog box for us to select the navigation graph we want to link the host with. Select the graph that you just made and press OK. I'm using the constraint layout, so I need to add the constraints for the navigation host fragment. If you're using a different layout, make sure to set the parameters for the host so it will be visible. Now that we have a container to place our fragments and activities in, and a graph to map out our application, we can start creating the destinations. Go back to the navigation graph. Click on the new destination icon and create a new destination. Select a fragment layout and click Next. Rename the fragment and click Finish. This will automatically generate our fragment class and XML layer files. If you have an existing fragment or activity that you want to add, add a placeholder instead. Then switch to the code mode for the graph. You will see an empty fragment. To turn this placeholder into a destination, we need to add three more attributes to it. Name, Layout, and Label. Name is the path to the class file for the fragment that you want to use for the destination. Layout is the layout reference for that fragment. Label is the name for the layout file. The ID is what we use to identify and reference the destination. Rename it to something meaningful. Lastly, set a start destination for the navigation component. Select the destination you want to display first. Then click on the Assign Start Destination icon. This will automatically add the start destination attribute to the navigation component and set it to that fragment. If we run the application, we will see that the layout for the fragment that we set as the start destination is displayed. Instead of using the default blank layout, I will replace the text view widget with a button. I'll do that to both fragments so we can tell the difference between the two.
If we run the application again, we'll see a button instead. To navigate between the destinations, we'll have to do it in the code. Go to the Start Destination Fragment class file. Since our start destination is using the page 1 fragment, I'll go to the page 1 fragment class file. Create a reference to the button and add it on click listener to it. When we click on this button, we want to move to another destination. First, grab the navigation class, call the find nav controller method, and pass in the button view reference. This method will locate the nav controller that the button is located in. If you have an error, you may need to import the navigation class. Lastly, call the navigate method from the controller object. As you can see, there are a lot of methods. The one that we want to use is the one that accepts a resource ID. Pass in the ID of the destination that you want to navigate to. In my case, I want to go to page 2, so I will put the ID for the page 2 destination. If we run the application now and click on the button, we will transition to another destination. If we press the back button, it will go back to the previous destination. The last thing I want to mention in this video for the navigation component is actions. An action is the link between the two destinations. They are used to determine the behavior when the component makes a transition from one destination to another. We can use actions to map out how our application can run. In the previous section, we navigated from one destination to another by using the ID of the destination. However, we can also pass in the ID for an action. To create an action, go to the navigation graph. If we click on the destination, we can see this circle. Click on it. Drag and let go on top of another destination. As you can see, it created this arrow between the two destinations. If we click on the arrow, we can see that it has an ID and some other attributes. If we switch to the code view, we can see an action is placed in one of the destination's code. If we go back to the start destination class file, we can change the ID to the ID of the action. Type r.id.action and the action ID will be visible. If we run the application, we will get the same effect. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will talk about adding animation when we transition from one destination to another. If you find this video helpful, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. If you have questions, leave a comment in the comment section. See you in the next video.